Hi guys, I'm Fera from Guitars AI and I continue the series on the very basics of musical instruments classification using machine learning and today I'll try to give a very gentle introduction to deep learning using Keras. So basically we're going to try to solve the same classification problem as we've been trying. We already used two different algorithms and now I'll try to solve the same problem using a uh, some basics of deep learning yeah so um, we start with the uh, importing our packages so this time I'm also importing Keras which is a Python API so uh, it's um, for um, neural networks and uh, it uses uh, different uh, backends you can use TensorFlow, CNTK or Theano I'm using a TensorFlow and uh, we can use Keras to create uh, our models, to train. I'm still using scikit-learn for some uh, different purposes, like to divide our, our samples into a training set and a test set. I'm using some um, uh, label encoders. Here is just uh, the main difference be between uh, the previous uh, tutorials that we are using importing functions from from Keras. So again, we do the same procedure. We are going to use the MFCC as an audio feature. So everything we already did before, we don't need to do it again. Uh, I've saved the vector of labels before we can use. So here I'm loading the labels. These labels, they are a list with uh, the name of instruments like oboe, flute, saxophone, and trumpet. And then I'm using the label encoder that scikit-learn will take this vector of labels and you will transform into a vector of integers and each number will correspond to a different class. So this is what we're doing here at this part, load labels. Uh, we're using a label encoder. We go from a vector of labels to a vector of uh, encoded classes. Uh, I'm using here the test set size to be 25% of all the um, our available audio samples and here I'm loading the uh, MFCC feature vector that we um, saved before in previous tutorials. At this point I'm still repeating all what we did already so I'm dividing our audio samples into a training set and a test set and I'm using scikit-learn with the stratified shuffle split and here at this point we have already our training set vectors of a training set a test set uh, the classes for our training and the classes for um, the test and they have these shapes so it's 450 uh, audio samples and each has 13 features which are the 13 MFCC and the um, male um, frequency capture coefficients that we calculated before. So at this point, we will start with Keras and create our model. So you find the documentation about Keras on this link. So uh, I find Keras a very, very good library. It's a very good API. You can do a fast, um, experiments on uh, neural networks. So at this point we have um, to do one more step to use Keras in our deep learning model, which is we need to go from uh, integer encoded classes to uh, what's called a one hot encoded classes. So basically it will uh, transform the integers into a list of zeros and ones so we have six classes so the one two three four five six so now we have transformed using the one hot encoder also from scikit-learn so we go from the integer encoder to a one hot encoder and we still have the vectors with the same shapes the next step is that to use keras we need to have a certain shapes of um, vectors uh, it's defined in Keras documentation. So uh, at this point, I'm reshaping 
the vectors which I had before. So they have this shape. So Keras, to create a model in Keras, you have uh, two possibilities. There is what is called a sequential model and a functional model. I'm using for this example, the functional um, model. And I'll talk about the sequential model in other tutorials. So to create a model, we need to first define an input layer and we need to give the uh, shape of the input layer and we use this input that imported from Keras. So the model input will be this input and the uh, it will be here is the um, so our feature vector have 13 elements. So this is the shape we need to pass to this uh, input layer. For this example, I'm going to use fully connected layers. So I'm using one, two, three, four layers, hidden layers, and we have an input and an output. So uh, at, this is where uh, deep learning becomes very challenging. We have too many parameters to define and to set, and it's not uh, intuitive and it's not uh, simple. And it's a lot of uh, trial and error and experimenting with different. So we can choose a network topology, a network, uh, an architecture. So I'm using only fully connected uh, layers in this example. The number of layers, how many hidden units per layer, which activation functions we are going to use. We can use what, what kind of uh, initializers we are going to use, what kind of um, optimizers we are going to use. Basically, at this point, I'm just guessing some values. So I decided that I want four layers and the layers will have a 12 hidden units on the first layer, 10, 8, 6. So here, this is how I am defining a fully collect, co connected uh, layer in Keras. So I'm using this dense function and we need to also give an activation, which I'm using ReLU. We can uh, use a ton age and uh, other activation functions. So uh, to create uh, a layer, this is how we do using the functional model in Keras. Then our out output, we need to tell also how many layers and we need to choose an activation. So for this kind of multi-class problem, I'm using the softmax activation functions. And then when we define different layers and then we create our model, we give the input and the output. So as you can see, they're chained. So this is the input. The first layer, it takes the input. The second layer takes the first layer and so on. So until we get the output, which has the fourth layer. And here we create our model. So how does this model look like? We can use the summary to visualize in a text form. So we have an input layer. This first here, it means that uh, we can have many batches and each batch has 13 elements. So in total, our model needs to train 406 parameters. So another way to visualize, we can also plot. So we can import this plot model function from Keras and we can visualize how uh, our model is according to layers, what's the input of each layer, what's the output of each layer. So I, des I decided to have this kind of dimensionality reduction. So it starts with 13 elements and it will finish with the six elements. And then it's a softmax with another six elements. So now we created our model, but we need to compile our model. At this point, we need to uh, choose a loss function, which optimizer to um, to use. So I'm using uh, just a, for this multi-class uh, problem, I'm using the categor categorical cross entropy as a loss function. I'm using a stochastic gradient descent with learning rate 0 0.05. And here with this compile, we can compile the, uh, the model and the model is ready for training. So the next step is to train our model. We need also to decide a batch size. So it's uh, the number of samples per each gradient update and the number of epochs to use. So um, 
this I'm also guessing these values it's not trivial and uh, in, in, in uh, other tutorials I'm going to use also the grid search with cross validation method that we used with the SVN and then we, we can pass a range of parameters we can we can experiment with different number of epochs different batch size with different optimizer a different number of layers and with different number of activation functions so we will do this in another uh, tutorial so now the model is compiled we uh, can train the model so to train a model we use the fit so uh, we pass uh, the training set the training labels we pass the batch size the number of epochs and i'm also passing the validation which is the test set and the test classes so it's the and then we train and then uh, it will compute accuracy and loss and we'll update the gradient so it's training our model and finally when it's trained we can visualize um, our training loss and training accuracy so from this I already expect that um, we are overfitting our model uh, I have this intuition so we can also do the same thing like we did before we make the predictions so model predict we pass the test set and we will have all the predictions of labels and we can do the evaluation of our model like we've been done before it's the same procedure so at this time with using this network architecture with these parameters we achieved an accuracy of uh, more or less 96 97 percent so the algorithm this neural network made five mistakes which was i think uh, a bit better than the knn's or very similar to the knn and uh not as good as the svm like we uh, we did last time but still for this uh, experiment to get the feeling of uh, deep learning it's a uh, it's a good uh, exercise so we all can also have the confusion matrix and we can see that uh, for example there are three mistakes there are two mistakes on the cello one it's uh, mixed with a sax and another one mixed uh, confused with a viola so uh, we can also have a which are the uh, files that uh, were wrongly predicted and we can also plot here is the loss and the accuracy is the training versus the test so the uh, green is the test set and the uh, blue is the training and we see how it performs and um, we should improve the parameters choose different audio features choose different uh, algorithms, choose different uh, network architectures to try to improve our model.